Good morning. You're listening to uh, Power Talks with Melody and Beth Ann. In the morning, where talk is real, truth is in the talk, and we believe there is power in the truth. Good morning, Melody. Good, Good morning. morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little parrot. You know, nobody, <laughs> nobody, <laughs> nobody answered us. Yesterday, we asked them if a song was stuck in their head all day. So since it's Open Mic Friday, we want to ask that question today. Is this song stuck in your head all day? Because uh, Melody had a problem with it. Woke her up one night. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's fun. It's fun. But anyway, I wanted to bring some positive this morning before we get started on the negative news, if that's okay with you. Are you there? Absolutely. Go right ahead. Okay. I think I am having microphone problems. I don't know why it's always my microphone, but apparently it is. Skype doesn't like it. But I had this. This was sent to me by my girlfriend. You know, my girlfriend, I told you, was getting married this weekend, and uh, she's getting a little nervous. I talked to her yesterday, and it was kind of comical. But anyway, this is a power of positive attitude in our lives, and I think right now in this day and time we really need this because we we hear so much ugly, so much hate, so much negative, and it's so easy to get sucked into it. Even in our own lives, when things don't go well, I don't know about you, but I get I get the blues from time to time. Of course, we've been complaining about the weather a lot. Sun is shining again today. Two days with sunshine does a wonder for people's emotions and their attitudes. It says your attitude. It's what determines your day. It says life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react to it. The small things in life don't need to be worried and stressed about so much. It says here that the to-dos can get to be to done, and you can get sleep, and you can get some food, and maybe a Snickers to satisfy. It says your life is great. You just have to allow it to be that way. It says people don't make you angry. You allow your anger to dwell within you. Circumstances don't upset you. You allow yourself to get upset. You choose to worry. You choose to criticize. You choose to blame. And you choose to complain. No one else decides this for you. We should give this to Hillary. I think she needs this positive attitude. Anyway, it was going on in this, and it says to count your blessings. And I think we've all heard that, to count our blessings every day of the things that are are important to us. There are so many good things in our lives. It says, look at the blue sky, which we can see today. Watch the sunset. Go for a good run or walk in your flip-flops. Have some ice cream. Be thankful for your family. Be thankful for your home. Be thankful for your food. There are people worse off than you, and that is always true. There's always someone worse, worse off. And see the good in things. Bring out the best in people. Bring out the best in situations. Don't assume. Don't judge. You can't control people's circumstances, but you can control your attitude. It says, view setbacks as stepping stones. I think these are some things that, you know, it's easy for me to count my blessings. Um, and I, as I've gotten older, I do less judging of people because I know things bring us to to the th- the choices we make, even when they're bad choices. I try to to try and understand where they're coming from. That doesn't excuse it, but I try to understand where they're coming from. But it says um, view your setbacks as stepping stones. And I think that's a difficult thing for me to do, and I don't know about anyone else. Pray. Pray for a positive attitude. Pray to recognize your blessings and pray to have faith. And last but not least is to smile. Uh, It says here that such a simple thing, smiles are contagious. So shine those pearly whites. Smile at strangers, smile at your friends, smile at Ruby, smile at your dog. It would make somebody's day and have the right attitude to, to fill, will fill you with the energy and peace. Be a light to those around you and redirect your mind. Today is your day if you allow it to be. And also, I have often said that smiling camouflages the wrinkles. So nobody sees the wrinkles if you're smiling at them. So. That's our positive attitude today. Well, now we got bad news to tell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, the ugly, the ugly uh, politics. <laughs> I remember when I was young, it was pretty much if you walked around with this, if you saw someone walking around with their smile on the face all day long, you think there was something wrong with them. <laughs> They've been up to something. What did they do? <laughs> There's something wrong with them, you know. <laughs> Jim, Jim Maybe they Stafford. Were mentally ill or something, you know. <laughs> Do you remember Jim Stafford? 
and he had the variety show. I loved variety shows. They just don't have those anymore. Uh, Jim Stafford made the comment one time on his variety show that uh, Baptists were like cats. You know, they've been up to something. You just can't catch them at it. <laughs> so it's kind of with a smile on the face. What have you been up to? <laughs> so anyway. Oh, well. Back to you. And something else that stuck with me for many, many years is, you know, one of my first jobs, um, um, I spoke to a, a top salesperson uh, in this business, and I asked him, I says, well, how come you're always number one in, in sales? He says, oh, it's easy. He says, if it's raining outside, he says, I'll walk in and I'll say, oh, man, look at the rain and blah, 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 blah. And he says, next thing you know, all the other salespeople that were happy, all of a sudden they were, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, they, they didn't want to work. And he says, I was all fired up, ready to go. It was all a mess. He says, it was funny how you could change people's behavior. And so while everybody else then started moaning and groaning, he got up and got this did all the trades because they were whining and commiserating and, and everything else. And, you know, that always stuck to me. And um, so it's good to bring some positive news like that to, you know, where we need to, you know, not allow other people. I mean, it's one thing when we think about the, the news and the negativity in the news and so forth. That's something else when you have other people that are always, you know, really, you know, down and about and they can actually change um you know, having an impact um, on other people to that point. And that was the reason why I said that. But I'll never forget that guy. He was one of the first uh, uh, people in this country who <clears throat> brought in sharp Pays from China, their dog, the sharp Pay, the little wrinkly oh, okay. dogs. Okay. And he, and he was one of the, the first uh, breeders you know, bringing those dogs. He involved in bringing those dogs into this country. So anyway, um they're kind of ugly dogs. They're cute, but they're ugly. <laughs> they're cute. Yeah, well. <laughs> did, you ever see these, did you ever see these contests for the ugliest dog? And they are. Yeah. They're cute. <laughs> they're, they're, they're cuter when they're puppies, but that's yeah. kind of the same thing with all dogs. <laughs> yeah. Ruby's a terrier, though, right? Welsh terrier, yeah. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, she looks like an Airedale, but just uh, 50 pounds lighter. Mm -hmm. So anyway, non-payroll farms increased uh, 103,000 in March versus 193 that were expected. ADP came out uh, Wednesday, and uh, um, they were at what what 200 and something. I can't recall the number off the top of my head right now, but they were way off as they usually are. So I don't even know why they even make their reports anymore on Wednesday. You know, it made the <laughs> stock market go up. You know, because you had that big bad day on on Tuesday, and that's probably why they use it. Um, and they came out with the ADP numbers on Wednesday, and all of a sudden you had a huge reversal uh, in the stock market. So today. Uh, and we're down, you know, a little over 100 points on the Dow. Um, who knows where it'll be at the end of the day? But non-farm non payrolls increased in March by 103,000. Um, let's go a little more into details on that. The unemployment rate is remaining the 4.1 percent. Uh, they were expecting 193. Here's some interesting things: the monthly February, uh, the monthly reading for February. Mm -hmm. um, was increased, which I don't buy that at all. They increased it to 326,000. That was what then? The monthly what? February for non payroll farm jobs was okay. 326,000. Okay. So they did increase that. Mm. Um, let me see. A broader measure of unemployment that includes discouraged workers and those holding part-time positions for economic reasons, um, the underemployed, that fell two-tenths of a percent to eight percent. That's the lowest reading in 11 years. Um, let me see if there's some other interesting information. I was just going through this right before the program. Uh, January's total. Let's grab in mind from yesterday that I had. Go ahead. January's total was revised down uh, from 239,000 to 176, uh, and then you got that boost in February of about 10,000. It went from 313 to 326. The March gain 
is the worst in six months. The February gain was the best in two and a half years. Job creation skewed heavily to part-time. This is what's interesting. Uh, rose by 310,000. So job creation skewed heavily to a part-time, which rose by 310,000. Full-time positions fell by 311,000. Mm. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, so again, part-time jobs are being created, not full-time jobs. Uh, One million jobs, uh, they say, were disrupted because of weather in March. Um, translating that to payroll means a lot of people weren't counted. Also, my question is we didn't see any of those one million people jobs disrupted in the unemployment numbers that come out on Thursday. So, uh, you know, again, conflicting information. Labor force participation slipped to 62.9% as those considered not in the labor force jumped by 323,000 to 95.3 million. So you have a lot of uh, mixed signals that are coming, you know, from their numbers. Uh, factory orders uh, were on the rise. Spending is slowing. Um, so again, things just aren't um, as uh, bright and shiny bright. as they say. Well, it's kind of hard to report bad news after your report. You know? I know. <laughs> well, keep smiling. Keep smiling. Stand <laughs> us with a smile. Smile all the way to the back of the line at the unemployment office. Keep smiling. Keep smiling. When you go from a full-time job to a part-time job, keep on smiling. Look at the positive attitude. Look, look at the positives on that. You get to spend more time mowing the yard, playing with the kiddos, whatever the case may be. But anyway, yeah, it's, uh, you know, like I said, that the article that I brought yesterday was talking about the unemployment benefits had increased. In other words, more people were getting unemployment benefits, yet they were claiming that there was less unemployment. Yeah, but not so to the, the one million. What's that? Not to the degree of one million that they say were, was laid off. No, no. But and that it was February in today's, you know, April, so. Yeah. Anyway, we know that they fudge the numbers. Uh, you know, that fudging started back in, uh, and they haven't changed it. Maybe I ought to tweet President Trump and say, fix the numbers, quit fudging the the numbers, but that changed back when uh, Bill Clinton was president, if I remember correctly, when they changed how they how they calculated the unemployment. <laughs> so they recalculate it, take a few things out of there. Oh, we don't need to know how many are no longer getting unemployment, but still don't have jobs. That's not important. <laughs> That's not important. Anyway. That's not important. I know. It's just so ridiculous. Um, Trump's economic advisor, Larry Kudlow, he's saying that the U.S. economic growth could hit 5%, at least for a short period of time. He says he's looking at the 5% annual growth in GDP. Uh, He says uh, there's like several trillion dollars below where we should be based on long-term trend lines. you got to remember Larry Kudlow, uh, all through the Great Recession, he was saying we weren't in a recession. (laughs) You know, I mean, he, he argued, <laughs> no, we're not. You know, we don't have a subprime, a sub, sub, subprime mortgage uh, problem. No, we don't. And he said it with a smile, and everybody believed him. He you know, he de- left on his pencil. He denied <laughs> the whole thing. He never even confirmed. And now he's saying we're going to have 5% GDP, and I just want to smoke what he's smoking. <laughs> Oh, well, what he's got. All right, we're headed into a break. It is Friday. We normally have open mic Friday, 717-300-1218. Stay positive, 717-300-1218. And Melody and Beth Ann will be smiling, and we'll be back. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Gold and silver is tremendously undervalued. Global demand vastly exceeds mine supply by more than 60% annually. There is little in the financial world more certain than a coming explosion in the prices of gold and silver. The U.S. dollar continues to lose value and respect as the world's reserve currency. Our nation faces challenges on many fronts, and a day doesn't pass without another economist bringing forth warnings of impending economic calamity. There has never been a better time than right now to acquire physical gold and silver. Discount Gold and Silver Trading was founded on the principles of truth and honesty. 
We believe in providing a quality product, quality service, and most importantly, competitive pricing. We provide all forms of precious metals, including American gold, silver, platinum, and rare investment and circulated coins. Silver bars, rounds, and 90% silver bags are on hand for the silver investor. Gold self-directed IRAs are available. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, that's 1-800-375-4188. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. Years ahead of the dominant media, FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Have open mic Friday. Keep it positive if you possibly at all can. And if you have to tell us the bad news, smile while you're telling it. 717-300-1218. That's 717-300-1218. Uh, I told Melody she had to keep smiling, so... I always smile. I'm always pleasant. <laughs> That's not what you said off air. Every... <laughs> Tattletale. I... No, no, that's that's not true. True. <laughs> this program makes me smile. I'll tell you what. I do the 4 o'clock show. It's very difficult for me to do this 10 o'clock show and because it just takes up my whole morning. Uh, I run a business. Uh, I have to make sure everybody's doing what. And, and it's difficult because it takes – Usually most of my work that I do is is done in the morning. Uh, and so, it is, but I enjoy doing this program. Uh, I enjoy doing something different other than the, the financial end of things that I've done for so many years. So this is kind of an outlet for me, a release for me. I get to smile, I get to laugh, I get to have fun. Um, and I get to bring the truth and I get to talk about finances. Uh, how I want to talk about them, and and it's um, so, you know, I I, I do enjoy this program, and uh, I, I hope the listeners uh, find both the, the the fun in it and the seriousness of it also. So, and it is, you know, it is that it's um, you know, we have to uh, you have to have. You have to have some kind of a positive attitude, even in this negative stuff that we see, and the fact that we can see through the lies, I think that's a positive thing. And we're helping others to do the same thing. And I don't know if this is this is very little justification, but I've got an article here where the federal judge approved a $3.5 million settlement from the Obama-era Tea Party targeting. And, of course, that was good old Lord, uh, Lois Lerner. And um, it said the federal judge approved $3.5 million settlement in a lawsuit against the Internal Revenue Service in the Obama-era scandal. You know, somebody told me there was no scandals in Obama. <laughs> administration for targeting Tea Party and conservative groups, according to the Washington Times. On Wednesday, the U.S. District Judge Michael Barrett approved the preliminary lawsuit and scheduled a court date 
for July 10th to finalize the case. Last year, late last year, the Department of Justice announced the case had been settled, but that the final claims and objections needed to be documented in federal court. To the top plaintiff in the case was Narco Tea Party Patriots a California-based conservative group. The case was eventually broken down into large class action lawsuit by hundreds of conservative groups. So I think it's good. On the one hand, you see it's good that they may be getting some justification. On the other hand, who's paying that $3.5 million to this to this uh, Tea Party group? That's coming out of tax dollars, is it not? Mm. Because of the uh, – uh, I think it should – I really do think that somebody like Lois Lerner, we know she lied about it. We know she approved this kind of mess or President Obama or whoever else is in between these. I think they're the ones that ought to be paying these, paying for their damages that they did. I don't think the taxpayers Taxpayers should should not have to do that. But isn't that where the money would come from? If they're suing the federal government for something they did, it would come from the tax. It would come from the the taxpayers. So they themselves, the Norco Tea Party patriots, they're taxpayers, so they're <laughs> it's it's just absolutely insane. And every time they talk about a special counsel, every time they talk about another lawsuit, California <clears throat> suing Trump or the A G is suing this person or that state or this city or whatever, I'm thinking they're just throwing tax dollars back and forth like a ping pong ball. And it's just crazy, and the taxpayers are the ones who lose. I, you know, I mentioned on on CSC Talk Radio earlier this week that Congress is the biggest threat to the American people in their liberty, in our in our uh, uh, in everything in this nation. They're the ones that are the biggest threat, not Russia, as far as our liberty. Not people coming across the borders. Congress is the biggest threat against the liberty and against the American people. And when you see things like this, you think, well, that's a good thing. We won that lawsuit. And then you think, well, who's going to pay that? And, you know, also what's more troublesome is no one went to jail. No, nobody got punished for that. No one got punished. Few people lost their jobs. Some of them were even rehired. After, oh, yeah. they, after they lost their jobs, they were rehired. Shovel a deck of cards. Why Just isn't she in jail? Fight. Yeah. She should be in jail. She should be in jail. And she should Someone be the one paying this $3.5 million. She's the one that should be paying. She's the one that targeted it. Uh, but no, they don't want to make sure she doesn't come out and say, well, I was instructed to by Obama. <laughs> you know, so, you know, that's that's why they let that go. You know, because uh, you know, she, you know, she was she was probably instructed to do this. So uh, they certainly don't want to. Um, you know, they just want to brush it on the rug, forget about it, and you know, pay we'll we'll pay if, you know millions of dollars of fines and so forth, and everybody will forget about it, which everybody does. They know they know well, Americans says, have short memories. It Americans says here. In, remember anything? It says in 2013, the IRS admitted the scheme, noting that it targeted groups with words such as Tea Party or Patriot on the tax paperwork. With pressure mounting and lawsuits gaining steam, Obama's DOJ announced in 2015 that no IRS officials would be prosecuted for their many potential crimes. While Tea Party groups are on the verge of a big payday, many Republicans are still demanding the Trump administration reopen the case against Lois Lerner, who led the IRS division that handled applications for tax-exempt statutes um, at the time. Lerner and many of the IRS have since resigned, but some speculate Trump's DOJ is considering reopening the cases into the gross miscarriage of justice. Okay, we're going to open the case. So what's Yeah, she happen? resigns and gets her benefits and everything. She didn't Absolutely. get fired. She gets her benefits. I know. I know. So the good news is they're winning the settlement. The bad news is nobody really got punished no. except the American Pete taxpayer because they're the ones that are probably going to pay that bill. I can't remember if it was Facebook. I can't remember if it was Google or one of those. And, you know, I they I was putting in a password, and I have 80,000 different passwords. So this is not my password now because I put in the word freedom, Uh-oh. and they said I couldn't use it. It was offensive. 
Seriously? Seriously. Wow. Kind of like the picture earlier this week, though, or last week, where they they denied the um, uh, picture of Christ on the cross because that was violent. Yeah. Yeah. So when they when they when they determine that freedom is offensive, and that's why you know people say, well, you have a problem with people with wealth. No, I don't. I have people. I have a problem with people like Zuckerberg's who push their, you know, their agenda, and, and their wealth pays for it. And uh, you know they. Um, so well, they push liberal agendas. They yeah. push agendas that go against the Constitution of the United States. They push agendas that go against the Bill of Rights. They push agendas that go against the American way of life. They have, they have benefited from capitalism, and yet they fight tooth and toenail against everyone else. Yep. You know, it's, it's just absolutely ridiculous. They are so <laughs> messed up in the head. We have Neil from Missouri. Neil... We got sunshine. You got a smile on your face? Uh, yeah, it's, it's sunny down <laughs> here, but it's going to get wicked tonight. They said it's going to drop to 20. I didn't want so. to talk about the wicked. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you said to stay positive. I've got good news for you. You don't have to pay taxes. All okay. you got to know is how. Anyway. The two, big, the two right. big taxes are income tax and real estate tax. If you don't want to pay the real estate tax, get the title of your property, which is the land patent. If you don't want to right. pay income tax, quit using Federal Reserve notes. Get your uh, your receipts for your goods, hard goods like cars and tools and things like that. Get those receipts that say paid in coin on the receipt. When you decide you want to uh, uh, buy consumables, you can just use a Federal Reserve Reserve note for consumables, consumables like food and gasoline because that's that's going to be consumed. The IRS isn't going to come out and take that away from you. But anything else, get your receipts. You know certified paid in coin and and there's no income tax if you cash your paychecks in coin because the assumption you know, is by the irs if you're getting a paycheck that you're going to be using federal reserve notes and there was you several, that presumption in court by simply showing on the back of the check it says right there cashed in coin therefore no right. tax attaches to it right. because you're not operating several, as an agent of a foreign corporation several years ago there was a company out of and this was uh when Derry Brownfield was still living and it was on his show, um, there was a gentleman out of the state of California that got in trouble, and he ended up being okay with it. They couldn't do anything to him. But he was paying his workers, and I, I think it was a construction company, but I do not remember what the company was. And it was a, it was in the state of California, which is kind of comical right. at this point in time. He was paying them in silver coin. Right. Right. He was paying him a right. silver coin, not We had a whole organization, not, not which I don't know if it's still in, in operation. It was called the National Commodity and Barter Association. It started back in the early 70s, and it uh, was based out of Denver, Colorado. Again? It was the National Commodity and Barter Association. And when okay. you joined, you got a list of all the members nationwide, and you could get all your goods and services, you know, and everything was paid for in gold or silver. And uh, the bank, the, they had their own bank, which had which stockpiled. It was a gold-silver warehouse, and you got your warehouse receipt, and a lot of people would simply trade the receipt. That's how banking originally got started. Banks were gold and silver warehouses, and people could use the receipts, you know, for trade instead of using um, the coins themselves. And, you but, know, we uh, know, too, um, just to expand on this, Melody, we know, too, that they're trying to get away from even using the Federal Reserve notes. They want everything to be plastic. Just use that credit card. Just use those check cards. They don't want you even having the cash in your belt fold anymore. Well, that's so they Isn't can track it? what you're doing. That's that's an, that's an issue of, you know, knowledge is power, and they want the knowledge of everything you buy. And that's a, that's a big IRS thing, too, because once they've got that information as to what you're buying, they can match that against your income, see if you're paying the proper amount of income tax to, you know, justify the amount of money you're spending. Yeah. But the way around that is quit quit using those things, uh, you know, debit cards, credit cards, what have you. Then there's no records. Do everything with cash. And, uh, I mean, by cash, I mean the, the government issued, you know, slugs, gold and silver slugs. And they've got billions of them, you know, in the banks available because the law requires, the Constitution requires that they provide coinage for the citizens to use so that you can't be forced into using Federal Reserve notes. 
that's why the use of Federal Reserve notes is voluntarily is voluntary, but the tax that attaches to it uh, comes along with the use of the note. So quit using the notes, you don't have the problem. And uh, okay. if you want to save money, grow your own food, <laughs> you know, or buy stuff only on sale. You know, there's all, right. there's all kinds of ways to, to get around this system. To get around it. But you yeah, have to get around yeah, to you avoid, have to be willing to, uh, do to avoid, too. Yeah, to avoid volunteering into their system. Don't use their system. There's all kinds of options, you know, legal options, like like I say, the land patent. You know, you eliminate your, your real estate tax, and then, then you don't have to worry about them taxing out of your property, taxing you out of your property when taxes get too high. If you get if you retire and you're on a fixed income, they raise your property tax beyond what you pay off your fixed income, you lose your property. Unless you've got the actual title recorded in your name, which of course is the land patent. All right. Okay. Well, All right. Thanks, Neil. Thanks, Neil. Appreciate All it. You're welcome. You have a great weekend. <laughs> Bundle up tonight. It's supposed to get cold and snow tonight. <laughs> We've got this beautiful sunshine, 40 degree weather. It's a lot cooler than it was yesterday. We got up in the low 60s, and and today it's in the 40s, and it's going to drop down to the well low 20s tonight, something like that, I think. Down snow. Anyway, but we're smiling. We're going to keep smiling. Deal with it. I know. <laughs> Put your but long it, johns on. Put your long I johns on. I remember last year, trees were budding, and we had a you know strong, uh, hard frost, and it killed a lot of leaves on the trees and so forth. So, you know, the same thing is sort of happening. It just seems longer this year, but uh, uh, here it's kill the Japanese beetles, we'd all be happy. Yeah, yeah, but the birds are certainly uh, out and about, and you they know, are, which irritates me. But anyway, <laughs> the birds irritate you. The birds, yeah, you get bird poo everywhere. <laughs> they love my house. Did you ever lay out in the sun and have a bird go across and poop on you? I've done that before. <laughs> Not yet, but I have a I have a wreath on my door, and I went out the other day, and there was birds building a nest on my front door. <laughs> Were they robins? Oh, I don't know. Probably sparrows. I don't know what they sparrows were. are very, uh, they're like the uh, overly happy people you were talking about. <laughs> sparrows, they just, they'll build anywhere. They don't care if it's moving or whatever, they'll build. <laughs> I know. Well, I had, uh, this, this wreath has been on my door for, you know, I change it during the season, but this year they decided to build so you know and i hate to destroy the nest so i take the wreath off and just move it so they can keep building if they want (laughs) so i'm not a nasty bird hater but (laughs) you know i'm very kind here's something you need to go back and listen to the beginning of the show about having a positive attitude (laughs) well i was positive i let them keep building their nest anyway here's something interesting remember not too long Excuse me, not too long ago you had Hawaii. They had their um, civil defense alarm going going off. Yes. And what's interesting here is we now have another one. This, is actually, this was actually in um, a Norwegian town. And a war- warning siren sparked fears of a Russian invasion. And, uh, you know, that went off in the middle of the night and it sparked a panic and and uh, just before midnight on Wednesday. And, you know, it's not a big story, but it's an interesting story because the world is on edge, I believe. I believe the world is on edge to the point where, you know, I mean, my gosh, we had the Koreas, we have we have everything else going on and, you know, all this Russia, all this England, all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, but it's interesting that you have two places where they have faulty or errors in a civil defense siren. So just kind of interesting that and, and really happened, you know, pretty close together. Uh, what are the odds? And, you know, do I think there's something more than that? Well, probably not. Um, but you do have uh, the, the Russians are carrying out massive naval exercises in the Baltic Sea. Um, you know, so... You know, there's a lot of threats being thrown around and warnings being thrown around, so you just never know. But I just thought that was kind of interesting. Just just something to... Very interesting. Yeah, how would you like to be woke up like that? 
Uh, it'd, be t- it'd be tough to keep smiling. <laughs> yeah. I have to listen to your program in the morning. <laughs> I have to get up tap dance, Melody. You have to get up tap dance. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Well, I have an article, and I know we've got some callers, but I'm going to hang on to this article. Just for, I'm going to mention this article first. We have talked a lot about the sanctions and the tariffs and all this and that and the debt and all this and that with China. But just a reminder of who China is, and we have said this several times. Everybody forgets. China is a communist country. This wife, uh, her name is Li Wanzhou. She's embarked on a march of over 100 kilometers, which is approximately 60 miles. Uh, yesterday, she began, I'm sorry, Wednesday, she began walking from Beijing to the city of Tianyan. I don't know how to pronounce these words. I'm just confessing. To demand an explanation for the detention of her husband, who is a lawyer, Wang uh, Wanyang. I, don't, I can't pronounce the words, the names. Anyway, the South China Morning Post explains that Chinese lawyer Wang disappeared in August 2015 after after he took on sensitive cases of complaints of police torture and defended practitioners of the banned Falun Gong uh, spiritual movement. As it is often the case with political inconvenient people in China, he was not properly charged, he was not given access to a, to a lawyer, and he has been allowed no contact with his family. And she is taking a march in protest, and I wouldn't doubt that she doesn't end up disappearing as well. This is who China is. This is who they are, lest we forget. Yeah, exactly. All right, we're going to go to Tom in Michigan. Tom, you got something new for us today? Um, um, I, I was just going to say, uh, you know, I thought it was interesting what Neil was bringing up about the Federal Reserve notes, and you know, there's a from, uh, teach kind of a law class on the IRS. He he used to say, um, you know, if, if only lawyers can understand the law, then only lawyers should have to obey the law. And so, <laughs> I mean, you know that that you know that, and, and I can see me going. To, suppose you want to buy a new car. Now, now you're going to show up with a pickup truck full of quarters. Because I don't think we get silver dollars anymore. But you know, there was a time, and I, you know, I think this could be effective when you know people were, um, you know, we bought land or uh, or you know, large purchases where we get the bill of sale, we'd uh, pay with uh, 21 silver dollars and other valuable considerations, and the whole thing was was the, um, you know, in the Constitution was any anything over twenty dollars was you know had to go to a jury and um you know the dollar today where when it says dollar or a piece of paper it's not a dollar a dollar was a you know a measure of weight of uh gold and silver of course they demonetized the silver under ulysses that's grant um but they, you know i mean i was glad neil called up because yeah, I'm convinced that the uh, you know the income tax is unconstitutional, but you know there's policies that they it just makes it impossible for people to uh, to really you know maintain a life and and, and live and have, buy the things they need to live and support a family and you know without and, and fight the IRS at the same time. A friend of mine, uh, he he was he he has a. He, he doesn't make a lot of money. You know, he, he, he works for wages. And, uh, you know, he had, for years, he wasn't filing. He was filling out uh, exempt on his, uh, uh, I think they're the, um, uh, I don't know, uh, the W-4s. I think it is where they, you know, um, but the IRS was all over him. They were putting liens on everything. And, you know, we, we told him, hey, look, you know, as much as we like to have people out here fighting the IRS, you know, you got a family, you got to, you know, you better, you know, do something because, you know, I mean, there's just nothing we could do. Um, so I think, so he, he had to pay something and he, he started filing. And now he says he, he gets like a check for over $4,000 per year just because for earned income credit. In other words, he paid him, I don't know, maybe 7000 and now he every year he doesn't pay any taxes, and he gets uh, 
uh, extra check for four or five thousand dollars. He says so. You know, so he, he like when he fills out his returns, he likes to thank them every year for you know for <laughs> persecuting them and that, and uh, for the nice big fat check he gets to go out and spend. So, I mean that you know that's that's right. one. I, so I don't know. Maybe that's a good story. That you know, it's always nice when you know if somebody can get ahead on something like that. The um, uh, you know the uh, thing with the Federal Reserve notes. I don't think that anybody any gonna be able to find written in the law where it says that if you use Federal Reserve notes, you're liable for a tax. And you know the Federal Reserve is a is kind of a is a quasi uh, private company, anyways. And you know, and ta- uh, the uh, tax law has to be you know has to ex- what's gonna, what what's to be uh, taxed, and any uh, any doubt is supposed to go into the uh, you know to the, to the citizen in favor of the citizen. That was uh, uh, there's a Supreme Court case. It was gold versus gold. Uh, G O U L D, um, and I mean, you know, and, and the thing is, is I think the thing is, we don't have any real courts that I've been able to find. We well, all that's have these, true. Uh, it, and and yeah. so, you know, when you when when they you know when they try to when they use these things like using Federal Reserve notes or the small C citizen, I think that's how these judges kind of use that for their conscience, where they're they're breaking their oath of office. Uh, no, I don't know that they have a conscience, but we're going into a break. Tom, appreciate the call. Thank you. We're uh, headed into a break. Your calls are welcome at 717-300-1218. It's Open Mic Friday, and we want you to keep smiling, and we will be right back. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed. It has been purchased. It has been stolen. There's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for missionary radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host cause and anywhere else the spirit may lead you do all to the glory of our god and creator for his holy nation the only kingdom that will last forever thank you for listening
Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. About, and you all can always find something to be uh, really mad and unhappy about. Uh, that's so right. that's how I am. And uh, what I'd <laughs> like to do this morning is say something about something that I've found that everybody with any sense seems to recognize as true, but nobody seems to want to come out right out and say it. And so I want to come right out and say it. And that's this. But it seems like the big problem that we have in this country and probably in this world is cities. And I've heard this over and over and over, like I've heard people from New York say that upstate New York is a fine place, but that New York City just kind of tends to ruin the whole thing because they outvote the rest of the state and control Mm -hmm. the state legislature and bring in all these crazy socialistic and destructive policies. And the same thing in Illinois. I've heard people from Illinois say that downstate Illinois is a fine place, but the problem in Illinois is that Chicago outvotes all the rest of the people and they can control control the state legislature and the governor, and so they get all these kind of destructive, crazy, socialistic laws in uh, Illinois. Well, and St. Louis, Colorado, Kansas City, what, um, Pennsylvania. What? You have the same thing in uh-huh. Pennsylvania. Yeah. You have Philadelphia every state and like that. Pittsburgh. And they're the ones. Yeah. They're the ones, too. Yeah, every state like that. Uh, and on a previous radio program uh, that came on just before this one, you know, I heard some people from California talking about how there's a big movement in many of the rural counties of California now that they want to form a separate state uh, because the policies that have been enacted by the uh, ability of the people from Sacramento, San Francisco, and Los Angeles to outvote the whole rest of the state, you know, are so destructive to the state of California. And yeah. so over and over and I hear this thing, so it seems to me that if somehow we could have it, we could make it policy in this country that no city can go over maybe a hundred thousand in population and then for the and then you can't and you have to have at least 20 miles between a city of a hundred thousand and a city of maybe ten thousand or more and then there has to be at least 50 miles between one city of a hundred thousand and another city of a hundred thousand if we could just get something like that <laughs> put into well, the policy and law of this country <laughs> you know, i think that would go I a do. long 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 way to making things a lot better and that's what I i'd like know. to say this morning thank you yeah. Okay. I do believe okay. in yeah. around the Pittsburgh area they are um, redeveloping the districts. Now I don't know if that's going to have any difference of an impact, but if you look at the last presidential race and um, the rural areas had their say and won basically um because you know in so many of these areas they they did vote the key thing is you got to get out and vote well and you know that is that is the big reason and it was the cities that's the reason hillary clinton had more votes she had more but votes. lost the electoral college and that's why those who are in the big cities want to do away with the electoral college exactly. and normally these big cities are democrat And we can see how that's gone well for Chicago. We can see the Democrat state of California, although it was in debt with uh, the Republican governor as well when Schwarzenegger had it. Um, But we can see how that's working out for him, and it ain't too good. And uh, the Electoral College is there to protect the rest of America from the big cities ruling over all America. It it has a purpose, and they're still talking about doing away with it. Both sides... Both sides have talked about it. Yep. And the American people, if we lose the Electoral College, I don't know if Joe is still with us or not, but if we lose really? the Electoral College, we're done. There is no republic left. There is no hope for a republic. No, you're absolutely correct. So it's um, <clears throat> so definitely, but people do have to get up and they have to vote. Uh, I think the last term, uh, the last presidential election, uh, would have been perfect for a third party. Uh, the third parties actually had probably more, you know, um, TV exposure than I've mm-hmm. seen in the past. Uh, mm-hmm. But Gary Johnson, 
but not the right one. Just not the right one. <laughs> he was one. entertaining, though. I'm but you sorry, know what's Kennedy, but he was not the right guy. <laughs> and you know what's interesting? I spoke to someone in, in Colorado, Rob West. Uh, he was on the show and uh, yesterday for a little bit, and afterwards we spoke, and we were talking about jobs and you know employees and so forth. And he says, you know, he says, I think you're really beginning to see the signs of the legalization of marijuana in Colorado. He says, people just don't show up for work anymore. He says, people are late. He says, and it's beginning to, it's beginning to expose the impact of, you know, um, the, the employees, because they're out there smoking pot, you know, they get up, they're slow, they, you know, they, they you lose ambition. ambition. They, they don't have ambition or they don't have ambition. Drive. And um, so it, it's it'll be interesting to see what other impacts the state of Colorado will Colorado will have. Um, I mean, certainly it wasn't something you were going to see overnight, but over a period of time, and where will Colorado be five years from now in some of these other states as far as, you know, how will they deal with that problem? And I was reading an article. Everybody um, starts at noon. <laughs> <laughs> and then they take an hour for lunch. And then they take uh, an hour for lunch. <laughs> I have an article today that made me think about what you just said that maybe this is what they should be doing. You know, people need to pay attention to who's running for Congress, whether it's a representative, whether it's a senator. You need to pay attention who's running. And uh, this was uh, President Donald Trump was going after the Senator John Manchin and telling West Virginia Business Roundtable in the vulnerable that the vulnerable Democrat has voted against tax cuts. Now, Manchin is not a good candidate. He's already a senator, I do believe. He's in jeopardy. But the ones that are coming in to to uh, uh, go against him in the in the in the uh, in the run is um, they're not very liable either. And so President Trump's not really endorsing them. He's just telling people get out and vote, but don't vote for this guy. So wouldn't that be the perfect time for a third party person to really come up to, up the ranks and really make it make a showing? Uh, the uh, other primary candidate, it says, is Don Blankenship. He was a former CEO of Massey Energy Company, and he served a year-long prison term back in 2010, explosion of the company's mine that killed 29 people. So I don't know what that was all about, but he's not a good candidate either. Obviously, there's going to be people there in West Virginia that don't like him too much. So anyway, I was just thinking if they've got all these, that, that was what went through my mind this morning when I was reading that article um, wouldn't that be the perfect time for somebody that's not an establishment on either side? Mm -hmm. You know, that's the only reason that, that Donald Trump won, because he was not an establishment. It wasn't because he ran on the Republican Party, although they ended up having to <laughs> support him because the people were, but they didn't want to. And he uh, he basically, I mean, he's not everything we want, obviously, but uh, he... Uh, he won because everybody was mad at the Republicans, and the Democrats weren't going to vote for him. But uh, some of the Democrats, I mean, the Democrat Party, obviously, but there's Democrats that are registered. There's citizens out here that are registered Democrats that don't think like the Democrats, if that makes sense to you. They're registered because grandma and grandpa or great grandma and grandpa were Democrats, and so I'm a Democrat, and that's the way it is, you know, because I believe in unions, and the unions go Democrat, and da 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 da. But it's not because they believe in socialism well, or social course. programs, right. and and I think they're starting to see that. And so a lot of those voted for Donald Trump because he wasn't a typical Republican, and he wasn't a typical Democrat. And he wasn't really a third party, but he really was not an establishment. And I think this is a good time right now, if voters are paying attention, if citizens really want to make a difference, stop electing the same people. Because Congress is the biggest threat on the American liberty, <laughs> on our economy, on everything. They keep voting the debt. They keep voting against us. You know, Sarah Huckabee came out um, this week. And I don't know where that article is, but she was going at Congress. Um, they were questioning her on 
Donald Trump's President Trump's I keep saying Donald Trump I apologize I'm not being respectful uh, for his uh, action on the border to bring in the National Guard she says look Congress didn't do their job now that's exactly right Congress didn't do their job but we're still smiling and I hear music (laughs) yes we are I didn't give you time to rebuttal (laughs) that's fine it's Friday it's Friday. You have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. You too. And uh, we're going to try and stay. Absolutely. We hope everyone does. And wherever you are, keep smiling. We'll be back on Monday. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures? and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a re-established Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions, and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using Scripture to interpret Scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit Cross the Border dot org c-r-o-s-s cross the border dot org to get your print epub or pdf version of nicholas arthur's new book titled when the third temple is built that's cross the border dot org the book of revelation says the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of jesus christ this is at the very heart of firstamendmentradio.com In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. 